Hello, Hare Krishna. Welcome to this session with the Gauriya Treasures of Bengal. So in this video, we're going to ask a few serious questions. We're going to discuss about what is life? What is the purpose of our existence? Who are we? What is it all about? The answers to these questions has puzzled man since time immemorial. The search for life's meaning has produced much scientific, theological and philosophical explanations throughout the course of human history. The answer to these questions are very critical in determining one's approach towards life and motivating one to live. And the very fact that you are watching this video and that man keeps searching for these answers even in the 21st century conclusively prove the fact that we are yet to figure out the puzzle of life. In order to find the answer to these questions, we are going to briefly discuss about the life and the teachings of a 15th century Bengali saint, an Indian saint, who had preached about a religion of love. His life and teachings have been instrumental in uniting people across different nationalities, across different backgrounds, be it social, economic, linguistic, cultural. His teachings has produced an example of such unity which the United Nations would have been very proud of. Sri Chaitanya's teachings have inspired men and women all across the world to be united in this common cause, to forget their external differences and help each other out in this journey of life. A journey which is as important to a rich as it is to a poor, which is as important to an American as it is to an Indian, a journey which is as important to a Chinese as it is to an Australian. It is not too uncommon these days to hear the chants of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna in the streets of London, Paris, Tokyo or New Delhi. Congregational chanting of Hare Krishna, by the way, finds its roots in the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Reputed international spiritual organizations like ISKCON, the Gauriya Mat, the Gauriya Mission, Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mot, Pure Bhakti, etc. etc. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings form the very basis of these spiritual organizations. Eminent personalities have concluded that Sri Chaitanya's life and teachings have no parallel in human history. Sri Chaitanya's pastimes defy the investigative and the descriptive abilities of phenomenologists or psychologists of religious experience. Being a practitioner of his teachings myself for the last 12 years, I am pretty much convinced that it addresses the root cause of all life's ailments. First of all, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explains that we are not our bodies. Instead, we are spirit souls who are entrapped in these bodies of matter. In this precarious condition that we call life, we are actually striving to satisfy our innate spiritual desires while interacting with this world of matter through our material senses. The senses of our material body are prone to be attracted to matter. However, our identity being spiritual, our satisfaction and fulfillment lies in interacting with the world of spirit. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu goes on to explain that a living entity is a part and parcel of the Supreme Lord, the Supreme Spirit. And it is his natural tendency to render selfless devotional service unto his eternal spiritual Lord. It is due to the absence of the forgetfulness of this natural tendency to render selfless devotional service unto the Supreme Spirit that a living entity gradually develops innumerable material hankerings by pursuing which or by enjoying which a living entity foolishly thinks that he can obtain the unadulterated spiritual bliss 
that he had been searching throughout. Hence a materialist who aspires to indulge or who indulges in gross material sense gratification has to escape from his quiet mire of unending sensual desires which only serves in complicating his life and further deteriorate his consciousness. He only ends up getting frustrated though because he does not obtain what he has been originally eternally searching for, which is unadulterated spiritual bliss which can be obtained only by rendering selfless devotional service. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu here gives an analogy. He compares the pure devotional service unto the Supreme Lord as the sun, the all-illuminating sun, and he compares one's service unto his own senses as the shadow. He explains that where there is sun, there cannot be any shadows. Krishna Shurjo Shamo Maya Hoy Ondhokar Jaha Krishna Tahani Maya Rodhikar Further, one who indulges in harmful politics, in enviousness, in sinful activities and works only for his own name and fame, gets preoccupied with gross sensual pleasures and drifts further away from his natural tendency to render selfless service unto the Supreme Lord. Such a living entity develops a sense of false pride a false ego which further encourages him to work for his own name and fame. This hardens his heart and pushes him away into the realm of committing spiritual suicide. Falsely identifying himself as a doer and the supreme controller, the living entity gets entangled by his own habits. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has hence stressed that one gets rid of his or her false pride to have any hope of making significant spiritual progress. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had preached about the equality of all men and their equal rights in approaching the divine. He had taught about universal fraternity and inspired a spirit of brotherhood amongst devotees. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had taught that human thoughts should never be shackled with sectarian views. Sectarianism, by the way, is a product of one's own bodily conception of life. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu preached that even the Varnashram system, which existed or exists in this Hindu society uh, even till this day, which is a division of the society into an order of castes, this, he had preached that this Varnashram system should not become an impediment towards one's spiritual progress. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had once sent Pradhuna Vishwa, a rigid Brahmana, to obtain spiritual knowledge from Sri Ramananda Raya, who, though being an exalted Vaishnava, a great devotee, he was a Shudra by birth. By this example, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted to demonstrate that a person can become a spiritual master, he can become a guru, irrespective of whichever caste he belongs to. Kiva Vipro Kiva Nashi Shudra Kanonoy Jai Krishna Tattvaita Shai Guru Hai. So, how do we overcome our sinful tendencies, our false pride, our material hankerings, and be situated in our constitutional position as a servant of the Supreme Lord? Is there any hope for us to obtain our long cherished desires of spiritual fulfillment? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explains that the holy name of the Supreme Lord is exceedingly powerful and by chanting them regularly is the primary means by which we can obtain our supreme objective. The holy name of the Lord is actually non-different from the Lord Himself and when we chant His holy name, we are actually calling upon Him. This point has been stressed in throughout the Vedic scriptures. It has been stressed in Srimad Bhagavatam, in Narad Bharatiya Puran, where it has been mentioned time and again that the chanting of the holy names of Lord Hari is the primary means of salvation in this age of quarrel and hypocrisy. Haren Namo, Haren Namo, Haren Namaiva Kevalam, Kalau Nastaiva, Nastaiva, Nastaiva Gatiranyatha. There is no other way, there is no other way, there is no other way. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was instructed as to chant the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. This Hare Krishna Mahamantra also finds mention in the Kali Santarana Upanishad. 
It has been described as a supreme deliverer of the living entities in this day and age. Repeated chanting of this Hare Krishna Mahamantra cleanses the dust that has accumulated in our consciousness for millions and millions of lifetimes and helps evoke the essential spiritual emotions that form the very basis of our existence. So though the Supreme Lord has innumerable names, the Vedic scriptures conclude that the name Krishna is the sweetest of them all. The word Krishna refers to the Anointed One or the All-Attractive Supreme. So following in the footsteps of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, let us all chant the Hare Krishna Mahamantra together. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. By the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, this Hare Krishna Mahamantra has spread all over the world today. The 16 syllables of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, which is the Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare, are not ordinary sound vibrations. They are fully endowed with the power and qualities of the Supreme Lord. Regular chanting of this Hare Krishna Mahamantra cleanses the impurities from our heart and helps bathe our soul, body and mind in divine bliss. Hence, one should not consider that this chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra is an ordinary material activity. Mahaprabhu's teachings are universal in nature. The most learned and the most ignorant are both entitled to embrace it. The learned man will understand his teachings with an understanding of the Sambandha Gyan or his relationship with the Supreme. He would understand that he is constitutionally a servant of the Supreme Lord. He would understand that the problem in his life actually begins when he or she assumes that they are the Supreme. They are the enjoyer of all that is survey. They are the enjoyer of all the fruits of their actions. The ignorant on the other hand have the same privilege by chanting the holy names of the Supreme Lord and associating with the devotees. The practice of Kirtan or this congregational chanting of the holy names of Krishna invites all classes of men irrespective of their nationalities, their backgrounds, their caste, their creed to the highest cultivation of spiritual consciousness. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu presses upon his devotees to delve deep into the spirit of the scriptures, not confining themselves to just the words. The life and the teachings of Sri Chaitanya are unique. Never has the world been a witness to such acts of immense magnanimity. A pure devotee of the Supreme Lord who has attained his spiritual perfection following in the footsteps of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu does not care for the flickering temporal pleasures of this material world. Instead, his only desire is to engage in selfless devotional service towards his Supreme Lord life after life. Being humbler than a blade of grass and exhibiting greater tolerance than a tree, such a person engages himself in incessantly chanting the holy names of Lord Krishna and glorifying the Supreme Lord who is the source of all bliss. Srinadhapi Suni Chena, Taror Api Shahishnuna, Amanina Manadena, Kirtaniya Sadahari. So, thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, so, in this video, we try to briefly describe the various teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Though one video is very short for covering the various uh, facets of uh, the Gauriya Vaishnava philosophy. So, please make sure to visit our website, the Gauriya Treasures of Bengal.com, where we have discussed in great depth regarding the various uh, pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his various teachings, and uh, there is also a bookstore that we have, an online bookstore. Uh, books are delivered all over the world so thank you again thanks a lot for watching this video we, we hope that this session was useful see you in our next video thank you very much Hare Krishna